Hello, Home Slices is Kier with Home Slice Adulting, coming to you with my review for the fourth episode of the first season of Love and Hip Hop Miami. I'm coming to you guys from a different location and from my phone because I didn't feel like setting up the camera and then having to upload the video to my hard drive and then getting it off the hard drive so I could edit it and then after I edit it, upload it back to my hard drive with the edited version and then waiting a whole hour for it to upload so I figured I'd just do this on my phone save a little bit of time I'm going on vacation later this week so I'm going to be um, scheduling some posts um, for some different content for you guys so hopefully you all like the content that's going to be posted while I'm on vacation but moving on let's go ahead and start talking about this episode titled Fashion Victims. So we start off where the last episode left off with Shay throwing um, a, you know, ice cream cone square in <laughs> Gabby's face. And so um, Gabby throws her ice cream. They start throwing insults. Pleasure P is just looking stupid like somebody hit him with some type of uh like freeze ray he's like frozen basically and once again baby blue is the only person with some good sense stepping in trying to tell pleasure p what he needs to do to make the situation right giving him some advice and pleasure p says that he never got the chance to tell gabby that he had a girlfriend because he didn't know where gabby's head at well stop lying you sat down and had a whole drink and dinner with the girl you had every opportunity to tell her that you were in a relationship but because gabby is the one that got away you were trying to um you know, burn a candle at both ends, you know, stick around with Shay, but at the same time, check out Gabby to see if she was really in it for the long haul this time and that she wasn't going to leave you after Pleasure P broke up again, you know, inevitably. But, um, moving on, I don't have time for Pleasure P. Um, <laughs> and while this whole scene was going on, y'all know what song came to my head? I did you wrong, you did me wrong, I'll take you back, <laughs> you'll take me back. <laughs> Moving on, we see Jeffrey and Malik, um, and the song I was thinking of when I saw this scene was, you give me attention, you're someone who understands my needs, <laughs> a minute's entity. Everything I miss at home. Anyways, we see Jeffrey having a romantic dinner at Malik's apartment. And, um, you know, Jeffrey says that he loves Bobby. And Malik, you know, being a closeted gay man, doesn't understand how Jeffrey can be attracted to a non-feminine gay man and a feminine gay man at the same time. He used some term that was bleeped out. I'm going to assume that it was derogatory, but um, Jeffrey says, you know, the fact that he even used that term shows that he's not comfortable with his sexuality still. And it's like, now that Jeffrey is an outwardly gay man, does he want to go backwards and be with somebody who's closeted? Don't know. Um, but moving on, Malik looks like Wayne Brady, y'all. Does anybody else see that? I think he looks like Wayne Brady. And he gives him this really nice bag that has speakers on the outside. And then, you know, to thank him for giving him the bag, he gives him a kiss. And then this is a recipe for disaster. And, you know, they start making out on the bed. And I always wanted to know. We're going to break the fourth wall real quick. When people start to get intimate on these shows, what do the camera people do? Do they just get out? Um, do the people see them out? Um, or do they keep making out and, you know, the camera people just gather their equipment and uh, lock the doors behind them? Like I, I never understood how that worked. But anyways... Later on, we see that Bobby is uh, Inspector Gadget. <laughs> Bobby was real smart. He came home, 
you know, typically he doesn't have time to spend with Jeffrey, hence why Jeffrey is looking for attention from Malik. But he says, you know, I'm all yours tonight. Let me just put some stuff away. He goes in the closet and he sees this expensive bag that he knows Jeffrey can't afford. And that same bag is the brand that uh, Malik is the brand ambassador for. So Bobby, like I said, is inspect the gadget. I don't know if I would have put two and two together, but if I knew that there was a first love that somebody else had and that they might be creeping back up, yeah, I might be Inspector Gadget too. So for the first time in ever, I'm going to say that Bobby's hypeness was justified and I actually think he should have got a little bit more hype on him. But we have to remember that Bobby does not know right now that, you know, Malik and Jeffrey slept together. So, um, he tells... <laughs> So Jeffrey tells Bobby a lie and he's like, well, he brought it up to my job. It's a gift. Oh, you accepting gifts now? <laughs> he came up to your job and it's like, oh, this is going to get terrible. You got to tell one lie to cover up another lie. That's what they always say. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm tired. So, um, yeah, like I said, Bobby should have gone off a little bit more, but he he doesn't know that Jeff slept with Malik. So that's going to, you know, hit the fan next time. So I'm interested to see that. Next we see Amara La Negra. Yo, let me tell y'all something. This uh, Love & Hip Hop has a lot of characters with a lot of different storylines that need to merge. Okay, but moving on. Amara La Negra is a little too intense this time around. I'm going to admit that because I... Last week when she went off on Yo Hollywood, I felt like she was doing a little bit too much. I thought she was doing a little bit too much this time as well. Um, Amara La Negra, I was upset because she felt like she was ambushed by Veronica and Yo Hollywood. She was not prepared to have a conversation with him and she didn't think that it was um that it was very friendly of Veronica to bring around somebody that she's had a disagreement with and she felt like you know I would never do that to you know Veronica and so Veronica is also was doing too much and was too intense and you know the insult insults started flying and uh Veronica felt like she was just getting Amada the um the apology that she wanted and Amada told them about her problems but i don't remember amara asking them to fix it and so when you get involved in somebody else's stuff and you try to fix it for them when they didn't ask you to fix it you can't say well you're being ungrateful because i did this for you you got yourself involved in something that didn't involve you i was venting i feel like amara la negra was venting to her friends and they took it upon themselves to try to go check somebody that you know hurt their friends feelings and it's destroying their friendship right now and that's on you know veronica because you know she used the whole date thing to try to get amara an apology and the apology wasn't sincere and so they you know get into a big fight veronica takes it to the next level and essentially calls amara weak for allowing Yo Hollywood's comments to impact her as much as they did. They starts with the the expletives, a drink is thrown. It's just it's too much. Next we see Miami Tip, Kiera and Gunplay and um <laughs> Miami Tip is doing a music video and uh Kiara is the the star booty in the video. And so um Kiara invites Gunplay and am I saying her name wrong cuz my name is pronounced Kiara, and her name might be pronounced Kiara. I don't know. Anyways, moving on. Gunplay is confused when he shows up and Kiara and Miami Tip are there together filming a video. And he's like, you know, I'm the only tip that she's supposed to have or whatever. Now, Gunplay is confused. He feels like Kiara is trying to teach him a lesson, but he feels like he didn't do anything wrong. But, you know, lying by omission is like an actual lie, okay? You omitted the fact that you used to, you know, mess around with my family tip, okay? But I feel like it is very childish of Kiara to try to get revenge and, you know, try to teach him a lesson or whatever. Um, what's interesting is that Gunplay says that he uh, is not, you know, bothered by this, but... We'll talk about that a little later on. 
Next, we see Veronica and Jojo. They talk about, you know, her parents' divorce, and apparently Veronica's parents are divorced as well. And, you know, she says it feels like abandonment. And so Veronica hates that she let Amada get too close. Like, usually I keep my guard up, and I hate that um, I let Amada get too close, and she's just so ungrateful or whatever, and she's very guarded. And it's like, y'all had one argument that got out of hand. Y'all can mend that back together. But moving on, Jojo says sometimes it's better not to get involved. And that's what I was saying. You in insert yourself in somebody else's drama and then get mad that it didn't turn out the way that they wanted it to turn out. You involved yourself in something that you could have stayed out of. But moving on. Um, we see Trina and Trick Daddy. They're doing yet another club appearance. I'm assuming this is where they get the bulk of their money these days. But um, Trick and Trina are discussing the new album. Apparently, Trina has to get Trick on the in the right mindset. Because to me, it always seemed like Trick was really gung-ho about the album. And Trina was just kind of along for the ride. But now it seems like it's the roles have switched. But um, I have to hear it because I'm... I don't know that a Trick and Trina CD today would do well, but um, whatever, you know, I'm open to listening to it. Um, Alvin comes along, Trina's assistant, and he's doing too much, and he's talking about Bobby and all that kind of stuff, and uh, Trick Daddy says, well, his money is on Bobby if Alvin and Bobby get into another fight, <laughs> but um, nobody could talk about my cousin that way, um, regardless of whether or not my cousin you know, was like Bobby and was unprofessional and always turned up every time he turned, uh, every time he turned up. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I didn't like that, but I think Trina is just so over Bobby that she doesn't care who talks about him anymore. But, um, Trina tries to bring up Joy and Trick doesn't want to talk about Joy. So moving on. So next we see Prince and Gabby and, um, According to Prince, Gabby's aunt is best friends with Prince's father. Sounds like an affair to me. <laughs> Moving on. Gabby says she's done with Pleasure P. He didn't even call. He just left and went on tour with Pretty Ricky and never apologized about the terrible situation that he conjured up between Gabby and Shay. And so uh, Gabby is a, a model and she's going to model for Prince's fashion line. And Prince is laying down his lame game with Gabby and she's vulnerable so it might work. Prince and Gabby, you know, stay out until the morning and when he comes back home to the home that is not his with his girlfriend, Liz is mad. It's the next day. It's like bright the next day like maybe 10 11 o'clock in the morning so i can understand why liz was mad liz kicks him out she bleaches his clothes in the in the tub and she's over it um the only thing she gets is a, a name from him saying that i was out with gabby now he didn't say i slept with gabby but of course that's where her mind is gonna go but moving on we see trick and gunplay trick is doing you know his 90s flow and gunplay shows up and interestingly enough, they talk about their lady problems. <laughs> I, I find it weird. I think that it's great that men can talk about their issues with each other. Because, you know, Lord knows they don't talk to, to women about them typically. But um, them exchanging their little stories about what's going on in their relationships was like, very odd to me i don't know but moving on gunplay said that you know he like i was saying earlier gunplay claimed that he wasn't mad at the way the situation turned out with kier and miami tip but now he goes to tell trick you know his lady problems and trick is like well you gotta watch miami tip and then trick daddy tells gunplay about his problems with joy tell my joy showed up and she was looking good and she was smelling good and basically she wanted to talk about marriage and a divorce but she can't do it on her time she gotta do it on my time and this is why i understand where joy is coming from trick daddy is using his money and his superior status in the relationship to do a power play to essentially hold joy hostage until he's ready to talk about a divorce it's been four years you dog the lady out you don't talk to her when she shows up to try to talk to you and 
you saying that she can't find the things that she wanted from you. How much of that can she find when you're still holding on to her and you won't even sign divorce papers? I'm I'm over it. Trick Daddy is doing this whole power play thing and I feel sorry for Joy and I totally understand where she's coming from where he uses his money to express love as opposed to actually loving her to the point where he doesn't hold his money or his power over her head. Moving on, we'll talk about Shay, Pooch, and Liz. They all get together to have a, a nice little spa day, rest and relaxation. Um, apparently, Liz is friends with Pooch, and they didn't find out until later that Liz's boyfriend was Prince, who was Pooch's arch nemesis. Now, Shay has the nerve to call Prince a hoe when she caught Pleasure P with another girl. See, this is what I'm talking about. People love to... Um People love to, to dismiss and talk about other people's relationships and don't even look at the flaw in their own relationships. Come on, Shay. Moving on, Shay and Liz share their issues, um, but they don't realize that Gabby is both of their issues, which is funny to me. But um, they decide they're going to crash the fashion show, and Shay um it's like oh well we're friends forever if you didn't know and i'm like well she makes new friends forever the same way she makes new boyfriends forever <laughs> she's a little too clingy for me um but whatever next we're at this haitian music festival and stephanie is performing and i don't like her music i wasn't a fan of it i can't even remember how it goes something about I just went shopping this weekend or something like that. I don't know. Um, is she like the Haitian dream doll? I don't know. <laughs> but moving on, Yo Hollywood is there and Veronica is surprised. And for the first time, I was like, maybe I misjudged Veronica. Maybe she really did only go on that date with him so that Amara could get her apology. So I kind of felt bad about um, misjudging Veronica. But moving on. Um, you know, the question now is, is Steph the bad friend and not Veronica? Okay, um, moving on, Stephanie feels that Amara La Negra should just get over it because, yo, Hollywood is a hot producer and asking Steph to not work with yo Hollywood is like Monique asking us not to watch Netflix. I mean, you gotta have your Netflix, okay? And she gotta have those hits from yo Hollywood, right? So, um, JoJo just isn't here for it. JoJo took their conversation to be very, um, kind of backstabby to <laughs> Amara La Negra. She's like, I don't like the fact that y'all are kind of talking about her behind her back. So, I'm going to get out of here. And interestingly enough, um, the other girls, Veronica and Steph, were just kind of like taken aback, like... How dare she be a good friend to Amara La Negra? Now, I don't think that they were necessarily talking about her behind her back. She was just the topic of conversation. And I don't think that they were saying anything about Amara that they wouldn't say to her face. Um, but moving on, Veronica was upset that she was arguing with Amara and facing all the wrath of Amara when Steph is the one that's, you know, doing deals with the dude that's causing all the drama in their friendship. So lastly, let's talk about this little fashion show. And so apparently um, Gabby hooked Prince up with Chinese Nikki and Chinese Kitty, who are a mother-daughter duo. And is it me or are they not cute? Something about them is not cute, y'all. There's something. Mm -mm. No. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Liz is too hyped. She doesn't really know what she wants to do or how she wants to show out at this fashion show. But Pooch is the only one with something to lose. She ain't got nothing to lose. Liz ain't really got nothing to lose. She's trying to keep them level-headed. But, you know, these two girls are too hyped to be calmed down. So, something's going to go down. Now, um, they see Gabby and... Um, Things are going to get ugly. So Pooch is staying out of it and is going to say hi to some other friends. And Shay is going to get some answers. And so Shay and um, and Liz go to some back room or some back office or whatever. And they see Gabby there and they start having a conversation. And Shay is, you know, who are you? And she's like, I'm Gabby. And Liz is like, oh, you're Gabby. <laughs> So this is when they realize that they have issues with the same person. So Chinese Kitty comes over. I mean, she has a great body, but something about her face just 
doesn't mesh. Um, but anyways, she gets over there and I understand why Chinese Kitty came over there because it was a situation where it was like two on one. But again, when you involve yourself in your friend's drama, you put yourself in the line of fire. And we'll talk about that um, in just a second. But moving on, the way Chinese Kitty walked over there was like, like that's my cue that's my cue to go over there like somebody sent her over there on cue it was so weird but um y'all when shay bucky johnson said that chinese kitty is an instagram science experiment i laughed so hard because i was like she is kind of funny looking <laughs> so uh moving on things get heated gabby throws a drink which is you know revenge for the ice cream and a fight ensues and Chinese Kitty um you know was in the line of fire and that's what happens when you get involved in your friend's beef when it doesn't concern you and then grandma Nikki gets involved <laughs> Shay called Chinese Nikki grandma Nikki it was funny um but anyways yeah they just fight and then you know Shay is like you know grandma Nikki can get it too <laughs> So everybody just needs to learn how to mind their business because it went from having, you know, three people be involved to having five or six people being involved and it's just too much. Okay. So that's the end of the episode. Next time on 11 Hip Hop Miami, we see that the argument continues with Prince, Liz, and Gabby. We see Prince versus Pooch because Prince blames Pooch for bringing the drama to his uh, fashion show. Pleasure P, Gabby, and Shay talk it out. Not all together, you know, separately. And Amara La Negra does a photo shoot. And uh, some more drama is going to happen because Yo Hollywood is at the reveal for the photo shoot. Why do they keep bringing this dude around? I don't understand. But moving on, Bobby catches Jeff with Malik and it's about to go down. <laughs> So thank you guys for watching. That is the end of my review for Love and Hip Hop Miami. Leave a comment, um, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video again i am going out of town for this weekend but i will have some content that will be scheduled to upload during my absence also for those of you who are interested in joining the book club we are reading the last black unicorn by uh tiffany haddish and i will be posting my review for that book on january 31st so thank you guys for watching peace out home slices